Hey everybody and welcome to a brand new installment of Nintendo News Report for Thursday, April 16th, 2015. I'm your host, Alexander Kalafi, and joining me this week instead of our usual host, Scott and Zach, or whoever our other guests usually are, <laughs> this week we got a new guest, Kevin Larrabee of the Back in My Play podcast. Hi, Kevin. Hi, it's good to be uh, out from the bottom of the pile, and uh, was able to, <laughs> you're, you're able to find someone to, to come and talk about some Nintendo stuff, which is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for having and, me. You know what? It is beautiful to have you here, Kevin. And well, uh, You get this to see week, my Tokyo Drift poster, too, if you're watching. I that. know. You got Danganronpa. You got yeah. Tokyo Drift. You have all my favorite things back there. This is, this is a new edition, uh, uh, Tanuki Mario from the Nintendo World Store, uh, where I was at last week, which was great. In, uh, so are City. you are you constantly traveling? Uh, now for work, I'm doing uh, a lot more travel, and like we were talking off air, I'm heading back to Tokyo next week. So, in a way, yes, I am constantly traveling these days. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you do fitness stuff, and is, is that like so that actually does require traveling? You working out deals and whatnot? Well, the, the, I mean, basically, what I'm doing for for work now, the main use of my time is we are educating other trainers across across the country and that's why i'm going to japan to you know get this japanese wing of our certification brand going out there and uh, like in new york i was at another gym uh, with two of my staff members to you know help out other trainers to teach them the systems that we use at our gym in massachusetts and uh mm -hmm. yeah it's just great it's it, you know it gives me an opportunity to do uh, a lot of travel and um, i'll take a free trip to tokyo whenever i can Excellent. Now, this week's top story is Guitar Hero Live, which, believe it or not, is coming to the Nintendo <laughs> Wii U console. It's, it's also yeah. obviously coming to the Xbox. It's also coming to the PlayStation. It's also coming to all sorts of stuff, but Guitar Hero Live is coming to Wii U. So some of the stuff about this. It's uh, instead of having graphics this time around, Guitar Hero Live is first-person FMV in which you are the rock star. You're the one on stage playing the guitar. You're responding to a live-action FMV audience. When you do well, they're cheering for you. When you do bad, they're booing you. And uh, it's it's actually very uh, reminiscent of the... Uh, I, I think I'm going to totally screw up the pronunciation of this, but like Sortier and Mar, that, that indie drowning simulator that uh, you can play online somewhere. It does the exact same, like, super immersive FMV first-person stuff, and that's really cool. It's made by Freestyle Games of DJ Hero fame. Uh, you know what? We should actually probably take this point by point. When, when you saw the uh, FMV stuff for the first time, did, did you feel good? Why not? Why not? Because I, I remember not just in, in Rock Band, but Guitar Hero, like, you were never going there for the graphics anyways. You were going there mm -hmm. for... Uh, the music you were laser focused in on the runway of the notes coming down the whole time really the the stuff that was going on outside of that was just for the people that were kind of waiting to jump in to jump on drums or you know for guitar hero to you know swap in for a guitar so maybe uh it will be a little bit more interesting for the people that are at like you know your guitar hero or your you know if you're playing rock band your rock band party uh to watch that but you know guitar hero has a different look and it definitely makes it stand out uh, compared to you know what's coming in the past and what Rock Band's doing. Yeah, and uh, if I remember correctly, DJ Hero Two, uh, which was also made by Freestyle Games, who's making this, they tried to do something with that too. Like uh, they tried to make the crowds bigger and the stadiums more immersive while still maintaining those visuals. And it feels like this entire art style is just coming to its natural conclusion. Because it, think about like Guitar Hero Three and Guitar Hero Two, what those crowds actually look like. It's it probably detracted from the game, if anything. Like, like the characters you were choosing from were pointless. They, they did almost nothing. Maybe there were special powers that I don't remember, but, like, it's do you want to play as this, like, hulking monstrosity is, of a dude? Do you want to play as the girl with pink hair? It's that, That's, like, what it came down to visually. Yeah, it was like the, uh, I forget, it was the, the WWE, I think it was uh, WWE All-Stars or uh, Superstars, the game that recently came out on Xbox 360 and PS3, where it was just like caricatures of these wrestlers. And that was very much like what they were using in Guitar Hero before it now. But uh, like I said, I think it's it's just, it, it is going to allow it to stand out. And they're doing some really cool stuff with the camera work to make it, uh, you know, seamlessly transition based on how you're actually performing 
and it, it, it looks really cool. I mean, I'll be honest, like, you know, there's nothing, uh, you know, good or bad about FMV, but it looks like they're, they're really going to make it work and it's, uh, it's going to help them look different than rock band, which is going to be what they need because they are missing some things that rock band's going to have. So they got to have something that's at least a little bit different and maybe better. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of the cool things about this whole FMV thing is that I was listening to the, uh, the giant bomb cast and they were talking about how to create this FMV stuff. They actually filmed two videos, one of the crowd being on your side and one of the crowd being against you. And it seems uh, like it intertwines naturally as you play the song to, uh, to make it be completely seamless, which is really nice. And oh, one other thing I'm excited about is we just mentioned that Freestyle Games is on this. Or this holiday season. I mean, I never have bought the... Uh, I've never actually gone full in on a rock band or guitar hero game before. And this, I, I've played DJ Hero in the past, and this game kind of looks like DJ Hero because instead of being the five markers, it's the three markers now, like DJ Hero is. And it's freestyle games. They make better music games, in my opinion, than anyone else. It's Were, were you yeah. big into the DJ Heroes? Um, I, to be honest, I, I played it at Best Buy a couple times and mm -hmm. it was just, it was at that time, I think it was like $130 for the whole setup. And, uh, I got, I got a little bit of an itch to pick it up when it then went down to like 40, uh, when they ended up being on clearance, I think it was for DJ hero too. But, um, you know, it's, it, it is a different look. I think it makes sense for them to not come out. Again, they're rock bands coming out with the full band again, where the guitar hero, guitar hero is just coming out with that guitar. So it, you know, if it just looked like the same five buttons again, it probably wouldn't be uh, very interesting or appealing for people. Um, you know, I really got to get my hands on it, I guess, to, to try it out. But um, man, I played a lot of guitar hero, a lot of rock band, um, but I, I still am kind of worried that it's going to be missing having you know, that party set up where you can have someone on the drums, you can have someone singing and someone on a bass as well. I, I completely agree. And it's, I mean, we got to see how much Rock Band 4 costs and like what yeah. songs it comes with. Because it seems like Freestyle is using the same music they would have used in a DJ Hero game to in this new Guitar Hero. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they have the Black Keys, they have the Killers, they have the Stones, they have the Fallout Boy. That, that eclectic mix you'd expect from one of these. But they also have guys like Skrillex for the first yeah. time, and it seems like they're they're going a little deeper into the electronic stuff. And they also got Guitar Hero TV, which is this network or this platform in which you can basically play Guitar Hero songs of all these new music videos. So pretty much think of like Guitar Hero on PC, how people would modify it or uh, use their own songs and an algorithm to make. Uh, the guitar hero play their favorite music. It mm -hmm. sounds like they're just turning this into a system and uh, you're probably going to be able to buy like either 10 bucks a month or five bucks for 10 plays or whatnot, which is probably the right thing to do because you need to build these as a platform. I don't think it's sustainable to have a new guitar hero or a new rock band every one or two years anymore. You've mm -hmm. got to have something like guitar hero TV where you can expect people to keep putting money in and keep buying this game instead of expecting people to buy Guitar Hero Live 2. Well, look at, you're not bringing any of your old songs over uh, from previous yeah. Guitar Heroes, where again, Rock Band is at least having um, some compatibility as long as you're staying on the same platform that you're on before. So uh, that that model just makes way too much sense where now, you know, whether it's like you want to call it the Netflix model or even uh, like Beats with with Apple's music, they're going to be doing something similar, Pandora um, and Spotify. Like having this kind of $10 a month for someone that's going to be playing a lot makes a lot of sense. And, you know, maybe they can justify it with the content holders. Like people aren't going to own your songs. They're just going to be going from this pool. And if they can keep it, you know, if they can shake it up enough where it's not like, like the people you mentioned, I'm like, that. that's like rock band one like those are the the bands that i heard in rock band one there's no bands that that were mentioned that uh were even remotely interesting to me um just because it's like the same i'm sure you're gonna have um like uh jack black and uh what am i i'm forgetting the name of the band was it the black uh, uh 
You're not thinking of Tenacious D, are you? No, Jack, Jack Black and his and his like sister or whatever. They, they had a band, and I can't remember. And this is terrible because it's like <laughs> Black something. Anyways, um, the uh, what, what I'm trying to say is they just got to make sure they get in some like fresh music and not just like the like the same songs that we heard from the '80s and '90s and the top like 20 hits for from today because I think that is just a very narrow market, and I don't know how many 12 year like 18 year olds 17 year olds 16 year olds that listen to top 20 stuff now are going to want to drop a hundred dollars on a guitar hero guitar and a disc I don't yeah know. no no i think you're absolutely right and that's why this holiday season is going to be crazy because you got rock band coming out in the fall yeah you got, it's gonna be a mess yeah you you got guitar hero coming out in the fall you got rock band coming out on the Call fall doing two com- Call of Duty, it's yeah, Activision's competing yeah. with themselves at this point. Mm-hmm. So, so you got these two music games, and they will be at different price schemes, but they're also two music games that used to be doing the exact same thing are now doing two wildly different things. Well, they're back to where they were at the beginning. Awesome. Like, they're back to where exactly. Guitar Hero, you know, Guitar Hero, I think it was uh, World Tour before it went into the band setting, which was like Guitar Hero, or maybe it was just Guitar Hero 3 and 2. And then, three was the guitar, and then World Tour was the band setup. Okay, so we had Guitar Hero three when Rock Band came out, and then you know they just eventually went and said, "All right, we got we got to have a drum kit, and we got to have you know a second guitar or a bass setup and a microphone because that is that's that's it's it's a party game. Like I don't I don't know how many people are gonna just man like it's Wednesday night. I think I'm gonna stand in front of my TV and play some you know Black Keys. Yeah. Like why why would you do that when you could be playing you know something else? I think that is it's a party game that deserves multiple pieces of equipment or at least get a USB microphone in there so you could have someone singing the vocals. So you think uh Rock Band isn't even an alternative but it's the standard and that you don't think there's a way for Guitar Hero to compete with the exact same uh setup or their own setup? I, I understand what they're doing. They're playing it safe. Um, they're mm-hmm. they're really like dipping their toe in the pool because uh, if they did have a two hundred dollar box of equipment that then went unsold again, it would really hurt Activision. Where I'm sure it's gonna it's obviously going to be a much thinner box. There's just going to be a guitar and a disc in there, and it's not going to take as up as much shelf space. You're not investing as much money into it, and the barrier entry is a lot lower. Um, so so maybe that that's how they're thinking of it, but. I don't know. I still think that if I want to play a music game, I want to play Rock Band because I'm just not going to be playing a music game by myself. I want to play it with a group of people and I don't want to have to pass my guitar to you. Then I'm going to sit there. Maybe I get to watch those awesome FMV audiences. And I don't know. It just, it just, it just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. But again, maybe it's just like, all right, we're going to test it out this year. We're going to see how it sells. If we can get close to a million sales or even you know five hundred thousand units, they're going across multiple platforms. Then maybe we can think about reintroducing a really nice set of drums and a second guitar in that USB or wireless microphone next year. So, are you saying you're going to get Rock Band Four when it comes out? Maybe uh, I, I don't know. It really depends on. It, it always depends on like if. I see other people are going to be interested in it because my friend group has not talked about rock band in years. Um, It just, it went away. We got rid of our instruments, whether we threw them out or brought them to GameStop. And um, it, it, it really depends if it's going to be the thing that clicks again for other people right now. It's just, it's not something where, Oh yeah, if I'm having people over on Friday night, like I'd still rather pull out, I swear to God, everyone just wants me to pull out the Nintendo 64 every single time. <laughs> like that is the console that's still, maybe it's just my age group that I hang out with, but mm-hmm. everyone, we just pull out the Nintendo 64 with Mario Kart. And even like, we'll just do like Mario 60, Super Mario 64, like level speed runs and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I, I, it, it'll be interesting to watch because like worst case scenario, it just crashes and burns and it'll be interesting to watch. Um, but it's even more fascinating that it's coming to the Wii U, uh, mm-hmm. where Activision has stopped supporting the Wii U. Um, you know, in terms of like bringing the latest Call of Duty out and stuff like that. So, it, 
Well, let's see. Let's find out. It could be cool. Yeah, it's uh, because you think about it, the last game Activision put out on Wii U that I can think of had to have either been Call of Duty Ghosts, which came out like with a whimper. Mm-hmm. I, I did that even come out? I'm almost positive it came out on Wii U. No, it it absolutely did. Okay. Which which came out with a whimper, or it would have been like a licensed Transformers game or something early last year at absolute latest. It would have had to have been Skylanders, if I had to guess, right? Skylanders. That's that's a good point because Skylanders came out on Wii U. Every yeah, every kid wants Skylanders, I guess. Yeah. So so Skylanders still has that's Activision's last game on Wii U, but it's that one doesn't count almost because. It was going to come out anyways. This yeah. is like, this coming to Wii U is an interesting thing. Because this hasn't happened since, what, the Wii? Uh, well, actually, these games haven't happened since the Wii. Yeah. So, uh, it seems like Activision's giving Wii U, like, a real shot again, which, which is really exciting. I, I wonder if they're going to... They wouldn't require the uh, the Wii remotes inside the guitar again. Oh, no, they, they oh. couldn't, yeah. Yeah, they th- there's no way. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, it's just got to be the uh, like standard Bluetooth wireless technology or whatever Nintendo's using in the console. Yeah, it's uh, this seems like to me it seems like the right thing to do with these if you're interested in buying one or the other. Don't pre-order. Don't fall into the uh, marketing PR. Just wait and see. See what everyone else has to say. See everyone else feel out these two games, and then make your choice. Because I'm a big fan of freestyle games. Love mm-hmm. DJ Hero One and Two. And then because I got the game, uh, the Best Buy Gamer Club unlocked, I can get Guitar Hero with the guitar for 80 bucks with the 20% off yeah. because it applies to the games that come with the accessories as well. But Rock Band, if that's a substantially better game, I kind of would want that too, which would be probably, what, 110 120 bucks after the 20%? So, yeah, I'm guessing they're going to clock in like at 200. If I had to guess, they're going to be. You think, you think it'll go up to 200? Because it was like, what, 170 last time the Rock Band tried this? Yeah, and it's going to be all wireless instruments. And who knows what Microsoft and Sony are going to be charging to, for them to license the, you know, the wireless technology. Like, I know that was a problem last time. I don't know if they've standardized all that stuff since then. Um, but. I, I would be guessing that they're going to have to invest a little bit of money into creating all these guitars again because they haven't made them in a couple of years unless they just had, uh, you know, these plans already in place for the next model of guitar, the next model or the iteration of the, you know, drums and all that stuff. Yeah. Have you, uh, do you remember what Guitar Hero games used to cost with the guitar? Because I feel like they didn't, they weren't always a hundred dollars. They were $90, I believe it was like, yeah, it was about $90 for the guitar in the game. Okay, so it seems like they're, they're giving a minor boost to everything. Yeah. Well, that does it. It's gonna be an ex- it's gonna be an exciting fall indeed. And who knows? Maybe because Rock Band isn't coming to the Wii U, Guitar Hero can get a nice little boost. Yeah, totally. Cause, yeah, because people are gonna want to play some music game. Maybe. Wii we'll music. See. Wii music. <laughs> that, that's the back final out. That's got backwards compatibility. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, moving on to downloads. This week, we got some classic games, things hopefully you can talk about, Kevin. Have you ever played 3D Fantasy Zone 2? I have not. I've been playing a lot of uh, 3D Fantasy Zone, and I have played Fantasy Zone 2, which is also a stellar, uh, like almost, I, I don't know what they call them. It's like a, basically it's a, a 360-degree 2D side-scrolling shooter where you can go left and right, and then you can end up looping around back on yourself. Are, are you going to buy this? Oh, uh, I don't, I don't know. I was actually talking with Greg, uh, Stewart on, uh, from player one podcast about this because I, I still think that, um, the Sega 3d classics are outstanding on the 3ds is, it is probably, I would say it's the best digital content on that console. And, um, I, I really wow. am doing my best to support as much as I can when they bring stuff out. I ended up getting the, I have a Japanese 3ds, a new 3ds, and I ended up picking up uh, the Sega 3D Classics collection, which they put together in a retail release out in Japan. So I had, uh, I think it, there was six games in that compilation, and then I ended up rebuying Outrun and uh, Afterburner 2 on the uh, 3DS eShop in North America. So uh, I'm definitely keeping my my eye on it, and it's uh, you guys, 
if you like this stuff, keep giving them your money because it's clearly working where they're, you know, you're going to be talking about in a little bit. They're, you know, at least seeing enough sales to justify doing some more of this stuff. If you had to choose one Sega 3D classics that has not been done yet, that is the Genesis era, what would you choose? Oh man. Um, well, that's super tough. I, I mean, it's not, it's not a Sega owned game, but I think seeing something like Thunder Force 3, I think okay. Thunder Force 3 will look super dope in, in 3D. Because yeah. there's so there's yeah. three layers of things that are going on, whether it be like lava coming up from the ground um, or in enemies like in multiple sections of the background or even Lightning Force, which is another game we were just talking about. But um, I think those, this, a side-scrolling shooters like ended up working really well when they have good parallax scrolling in there. And uh, I don't know, I'd, other other Genesis stuff, it's, I mean, there's there's so many games that you could pick from. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're doing Gunstar Heroes, which was an obvious choice, but um, maybe Vector Man. That's a crappy game, but it would look Ooh. super cool. It's, yeah, yeah, the cool thing about a lot of these is that a lot of them were designed with 3D in mind in the first place because they were all so gimmick, gimmicky in that era. Yeah. So a lot of them just naturally fit for the 3DS. Like a 3D Classics of F-Zero would probably be fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is what they should be doing on the console. Like, the the capabilities are there. And as long as M2 continues to have the, the, you know, time to do it and Sega has the money to to give them or Nintendo if they want to, you know, do more stuff. Like, I, I got Kid Icarus 3D on the part of the, you know, when they, the last ditch effort to get rid of all your coins, I got Kid Icarus sure. 3D and um, that game like looks awesome in, in 3D. Yeah. And I just hope they do more stuff like that. And hell start looking at, you know, the super Mario brothers, like super, having super Mario brothers, like one in 3D would, would look really cool. I would totally play through that, you know, again on my 3DS uh, if they could do that stuff. Yeah. Mario's turning 30 this year. It's 30, right? It's, it's, yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's doing one of those. Yeah, yeah, for uh, Mario Maker, and they said during the Nintendo Direct that they would be doing other stuff in celebration of Mario this year. Totally, Mario 3D Classics. That's your solution, and it's probably like compared to all the games that you could do a 3D Classics for, that would be super difficult to make because I know you have to remake the games pretty much entirely. Yeah, Mario would probably be one of the easier ones, I'd imagine. Well, if they want to sell a bunch of them, that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, Kid Icarus, I know there's, and I'm, especially for this audience watching this right now, this is the audience where like, oh, Kid Icarus is a franchise now, and Nintendo's going to bring it back. Like, you know, that and Metroid. We need more Kid Icarus games. We need more Metroid. Kid Icarus Uprising 2 coming to <laughs> 2016. Um, but I, I don't know. I, th- I think for, for those franchises, it, it looks really good when they can just slap on the 3D look to it or the 3D, you know, graphical uh, gimmick to it, and it brings new life to it. And if it's an extra buck compared to the virtual console game, like, yeah, I'll give you an extra dollar, especially with, you know, now with the new 3DS where the 3D actually works. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to do all that stuff right now. Excellent. And then we also got Donkey Kong 64 this week, a, uh, a game I've always looked at because I'm a huge fan of the Donkey Kong Country games, specifically the newer ones, though those are made by Retro, not Rare. Mm -hmm. And I I was wondering if Donkey Kong 64 would be something worth checking out. Kevin, could you answer that question for me? That's a polarizing game. And uh, I I went back to it when I was in college, like in 2004, and my local GameStop, or it might have still been EB Games at the time, was getting rid of all their Nintendo 64 stuff. And I ended up grabbing a copy of that and I just, I could not get into it. And it, it might've just been the state of where I was at the time, but I missed it at launch because it was in that like 2000, uh, year 2000 where I was starting to check out the PlayStation one and then the PlayStation two came out and don't forget I had a Dreamcast, So I had all these games that looked way better than anything else on the Nintendo 64 and it was just tough to justify, you know, getting Donkey Kong 64 after, you know, liking Donkey Kong Country. I, actually, I really like Donkey Kong Country. I think that's an awesome game on Super Nintendo. Um, I've still, I have Donkey Kong Country. Actually, I have Super Donkey Kong 
two and three are the <laughs> Japanese versions of those games because they're like way cheaper in Japan. Um, but I have those on my to-do list for, for games to play. Uh, but at, at, in terms of like Donkey Kong 64, uh, 3d open world, uh, platformers, you know, kind of hit and miss. I know there's some people that really, really love it. Like some people really, really love Banjo and Kazooie. Um, it's just, it just wasn't for, for me, but at least I'm, I'm just happy that Nintendo is getting some Nintendo 64 games finally on the Wii U. It took them, you know, enough time to get them on there, but at least, you know, the trickle is, is started. Yeah, and at least they're choosing interesting ones, I guess. Because I mean, yeah. I, I'm I'm really excited for Smash Bros. 64 to come out because I, I never actually played that on the Wii, though I, I've played it in the past before. Mm-hmm. Donkey Kong 64 is cool because it's the game not many people would like be begging for, but it's almost a pleasant surprise that it's here and it's here yeah. so early. There you go. Yeah. And then you also got the Street Pass stuff. That came out this week. Street Pass Premium is 5 bucks. You can do stuff like track birthdays and uh, do some other neat stuff. And then Ultimate Angler and Battleground Z came out. I never got into the Street Pass games that you purchase. Like, mm-hmm. I played Find Me. I played the Find Me expansion that uh, Awada announced during that Nintendo Direct, I think. And then I played some of the puzzles. And then I sort of stopped doing Street Pass a long time ago once I realized, like, the cycle of repetition and how there wasn't really anything in it anymore. Like, like once you have one good PAX East of uh, doing Street <laughs> Passes, and my experience, I never really found the urge to do it again. But but are you into the Street Pass stuff more? Uh, I, I Same thing. Like, I was at PAX, obviously, this year, and there was a ton of people that I Street Passed with. And uh, the only time I really look at it is when I'm, like, again, when I'm, I go to Japan twice a year. So I, when I'm sitting in like the train and on my way back to my hotel or going back to my friend's house, uh, I'll like look through them because it's always full. Like no matter what, like you, you get on a train and you immediately fill up those 10 passes. And, uh, it's sometimes funny to, to look at, you know, you can kind of put a, like a blurb, uh, and there'll be like quotes that you can put in there. Like, uh, sometimes people use broken English and it's so (laughs) funny. Like, a lot of times like people will just say, I'm, I'm like, it's, you can say like, I want something. I forget like what the, all the taglines are, but people say like, I want to find like my love or something like that. So it's always weird to <laughs> see that like 90% of the street passes I get in Japan. They're just saying like either, either it's, I love sleeping or I'm looking for my like love, my first love or my, my wife or whatever. So it's, uh, it's more just like, I'm curious what people have to say in that stuff because it can get pretty weird. And PAX East, like it was kind of weird what people wrote in that stuff. Yeah, because it's PAX East and like all other conventions are unique in that you get to see all kinds of people in one place yeah. who like the same thing you do. And that's mm-hmm. something you never see anywhere else in your real life. So you'll see plenty of the cool people who you're glad to meet and you can hang out with and have a great time. And then you see the other people who post that shitty stuff on street pass, like you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I think more, more than anything, it's, it's cool to see what people are playing. And uh, like the last, not last trip, but two trips ago, like everyone was playing fantasy life. I swear, like 90% of the street passes I got were all fantasy life. And then like before that it was right when, uh, Monster Hunter 4 came out, not Ultimate, but just mm-hmm. regular 4 came out on the 3DS, yeah. and everybody was playing that. Uh, so it is, it's really fascinating to see the trends of what people are playing in Japan when you get there, because I would say, you know, like I said, like maybe like 75, 80% of the people that I street pass with, they're all playing the same game. They're all playing the same game, and it's just like to cool to see the trends of what people are playing every single time you go out there, like every six months. Yeah, that's real nice. Uh, Street Pass. It's, it's a, what a weird thing that Nintendo came up with for 3DS, and it, it ended yeah. up being probably more of a hit than they anticipated. Yeah, it's just I, I wish it did. I wish it did more. I wish it allowed for more communication, but of course, you know, it's Nintendo, so you can't talk to each other and. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's even on the new 3DS, it's super slow to get through all 10 of those three passes. And at some point, you're just like, nah, it's all right. I'm just going to open up my phone and look on Twitter on the train and listen <laughs> to some music instead of opening up my 3DS, like the, as the sole white guy on the train going home. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then we got uh, we got Mewtwo and Smash. That came out this week with the uh, the new Smash update. And then you also got the Me Costume DLC with Mega Man and uh, who, who were the other ones? It's, there was Mega Man and then one other really cool Capcom one. Hmm. It's it's. Uh, it's you got two Mega Man costumes, and then you got a bunch of other costumes that are pretty cool, also. So the thing I, I haven't played Mewtwo. You haven't played Mewtwo, though. You have codes for Mewtwo. I, I might buy it eventually when it comes out in a couple months. We'll in a couple weeks. We'll see. But what I'm hearing about Mewtwo is that he's extremely similar to his uh, iteration in Melee, but he's got a couple new moves. He's still really floaty. He's still. Uh, pretty strong, and he's still not that hard to KO. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It's I, I just I like Mewtwo as a Pokemon. I think more than I care for Mewtwo as a Smash character, which is the opposite of how I feel about Charizard. Because I'm not a big Charizard guy in Pokemon, but he's my favorite character to play as in Smash. I I think it's great that they're doing DLC. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Hell yeah! Like let's let's continue to get as many people on there as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. who, who are you voting for in the Smash ballot? Oh man, I want uh, I want the guy. I forget the name. Uh, the guy from Super Ghouls and Ghosts. That's who I want. It's, uh, the protagonist. Yeah, I forget the the knight. Okay. I want the knight from Super. Actually, just from Ghouls and Ghosts, not Super Ghouls and Ghosts, which runs at like four frames per second. I okay. want Ghouls and Ghosts from the Genesis, unless like his superpower is that he can cause the game to run at ten frames per second. Like if you've ever played Super Ghouls and Ghosts, from the get go, once you get that double jump going, everything just starts. I mean, it was like a launch game for Super Nintendo, so that thing chugs. Uh, yeah. was not necessarily optimized where the, the Genesis version uh, runs buttery smooth, although it does not look as good and the music is not as good. So it's a trade-off. And is that Capcom published? Oh, of course, yeah. Actually, okay, so, yeah. so then... Yeah. 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 So, so there's actually a chance of that happening. That could feasibly happen. Nintendo could feasibly make that happen if enough people voted for... Uh, the, the night super, or the regular ghouls, the night from ghouls and ghosts over Daisy. So we'll yeah, see. I, I, there's just so there's so many characters that I I, I don't know who everyone's going to rally behind. Um, but you know maybe maybe you could get some like like Axel from Streets of Rage. That'd be a good one too. Yeah. Um, or Hagger if you want to get Hagger from you know Final Fight. Although it's the lesser mm -hmm. of the two beat 'em ups. It's uh. There's another good option if you want to get some uh, like actual you know characters that usually beat the crap out of other people. The difficult thing about this Smash ballot is that as far as I know, like a lot of the characters who would be obvious picks to become fighters aren't actually eligible because you got Ridley, who is can't be playable because he's already a boss, and then you got yeah, Waluigi. That's a crazy rule. That's that's nuts. It's yeah, but but it's. I mean, they can't have repetition. They can't have a Waluigi playing and then a Waluigi assist trophy come out because that's not Nintendo's style. I think it would look clumsy to see that in the game, at least by Nintendo's super high polishing standards. Yeah, it's just fun. Think, I'm just all about having fun, man. I'm just all about, you know, <laughs> what they want, having some fun. It's a, you know, it's a fighting game. Like, eventually, like in Mortal Kombat, you know, eventually Reptile got in the game. You know, he was hiding behind yeah. that tree, but eventually... <laughs> Uh, or whoever it was, Smoke or whatever, got in the game. Yeah, I uh, I mean, speaking of Animal Crossing crossovers, as we're going to do in a minute, I voted for Tom Nook because I think that Tom Nook good. probably should have been in this game, perhaps over Villager. I mean, I guess they made Villager a character, which is really nice. I didn't anticipate them actually doing that successfully, which they did. Mm -hmm. But Tom Nook is the face of Animal Crossing, for better or worse. Yeah. And I feel like... He, there's a lot of potential there because he's got the money bags, he's got the store, he's got his kids. He's a horrible person, right? He's a, he's a terrible yeah, person that's just trying to keep people in debt. It's like those those stories that you hear. There's a good episode of The West Wing on this where uh, you know, there's <laughs> this country where they're just trying – they basically make the farmer – they sell these farmers land to grow crops on, but they sell them – at such a rate where they will never make enough money back off the crops that they sell to buy the land or you know pay off the loan for the land, so they're constantly you know stuck in debt and are endowed to this this you know person that loaned the money. That's Tom Nook. He's a dark dude. He is almost he's, he's 
I don't want to make this too dark, but he is he's just a terrible person and I'm surprised. Are you calling Nintendo. Tom Nook a sharecropper? Yeah, <laughs> is Tom Nook be, a sharecropper? I'm surprised it wasn't rated M for mature because you're teaching these kids and you know, everyone that's playing Animal Crossing some really, you know, terrible methodologies on how to treat other people. It's it's really gross. And uh you now you can go to my petition at change dot org slash Tom Nook is First a monster. <laughs> Yeah, it's for Smash, yeah. That's what. <laughs> All right. And uh, so there you go. There's Mewtwo. Sorry we couldn't give you a better discussion. Hopefully if, if one of the gang is here next week who has played as Mewtwo, we'll, we'll be sure to bring him up. Moving on to news. We got a few stories. Uh, we got a couple of them we can run through quick, and then we can uh, go into the biggest story. Speaking of Sega Classics, Mach 2 is coming. Sega will continue its line of 3D Classics with uh, Genesis' favorite, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Streets of Rage 2, and Gunstar Heroes. Uh, the, uh, and then they also got... So those are the three new ones that they announced. Streets of Rage 2, oh my goodness, I can't wait. Hell of a lineup. Hell of a lineup. Hell of a lineup. God, it's three six games. bucks. Man, three <laughs> games, and they're, they're all better than all the ones that came before it, in my opinion. I don't know. I, I, wow. I, I can always, there's, there's times where I can, I enjoy the music of Streets of Rage 1 sometimes more than 2. It's a little bit more chill. Um, and dude, Outrun. Let's, Outrun is a classic that transcends every genre. It is, it has some of the best music ever in video games. It has, uh, for the time that it came out in 1986, you know, in terms of arcade hardware, that thing was, Incredible! It it was mimicking, you know, 3D graphics on 2D hardware with how they scaled the sprites. It was like before the Super FX chip, before all that stuff. They were doing it in this like jazzed up uh, Sega. I think it was like model. I forget what model it was like model two hardware in the arcade. And as someone that's owned four Outrun machines, two of which were destroyed for parts, um, that is a game that just. It's it's always fun. You can always jump in. You can play for ten minutes. You can play for five minutes and still have a blast. And at the end, you get to hear "Last Wave." It's soothing music. That even though you lost, it's all right because that that track, that "Last Wave" track, is just going to make you feel all right. But you're right; those three are really, really good games too. It's it's just like it's an extremely strong lineup for just three, and it's not actually just three games. Now that I think about it, because they actually got the release lineup here. Fantasy Zones today, uh, Fantasy Zone 2, April 16th. Then you got 3D Thunderblade, May 14th, Streets of Rage 2 in July, Gunstar Heroes in August, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in September, and then they're all going to be $5.99. Also, in addition to that, you got the stereoscopic graphics, but Sega is promising that each of the games is going to have new features and modes. Yep. So you can spin dash in the original Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Okay, no, no, no. So they didn't say what it was, but they said some of the examples. Mm -hmm. Some of the examples of this feature in the past are the Spin Dash and Sonic 1, and then the Super Dolphin mode in Echo the Dolphin. So there you go. That's yeah, it. Like, That's it. What, what do you think the Streets of Rage 2 one would be? Well, I mean, the, what, what's great about all these is that they, at least, I mean, especially for the hard gate arcade games that they basically give you dip switch options in the options menu. So you had the same options that you would have if you were modifying the dip switches on the actual board in the arcade machine. Um, so that is that is super cool. Streets of Rage 2 is a classic. It's, it's the best side-scrolling brawler of all time. It just... I know this is a Nintendo World Report. I know Final Fight was the uh, direct comparison on the Super Nintendo, but it is just no contest. You try, if you sit someone down, do a test. Sit someone down, have them play Final Fight 1 th through 3, and they can pick their favorite out of those three, and then have them sit down and play Streets of Rage 2. See which they have more fun with, and, you know, which more, like, I mean, it's Yuzo Koshiro. Like, this is one of the best composers in the history of video games, who still today is making awesome soundtracks for, like, Etrian Odyssey 4. I don't play that game. I bought the soundtrack so I could listen to the soundtrack because of how great it is. Wow. Um, I know I, I bought Etrian Odyssey 4. It came with, like, a CD, bonus CD. I never got around to playing the game. I sold the game, kept the CD because it was so good. So, 
uh, basically I bought the CD soundtrack, but um, okay. what, what I'm trying to say is you know, like Streets of Rage 1, you should have that on your 3DS. Streets of Rage 2, you should have it on your 3DS. Um, whenever it pops up on the... And these are $6. I mean, $6 compared to an, an NES game, which is $5. The, the, the value that you're getting out of this is incredible. Like You should buy every one of these games if you have even the slightest amount of interest in it because... Uh, the amount of work that they put into it, plus you're getting a Sega Genesis game for six bucks. It's you know some of the best deals on the uh, Nintendo eShop. There you have it. And the other uh, crazy eShop news, Mega May is coming back after last year's Mega May promotion on 3DS. Capcom's bringing it back around with four new GBA games for the Wii U Virtual Console. And there's a poll at Capcom Unity where you can vote on which game you want to come out first uh, on May 7th. And the games you can vote on, Mega Man Battle Network 3, which blue and white, and then you got Mega Man Battle Network 4, Red Sun, Blue Moon, Mega Man and Bass, Mega Man Zero 2. Kevin, which of these is the best game? It's probably going to be the Zero games. I have the Mega Man Zero collection on the DS, which is, uh, mm -hmm. if you want to go that route, if you still want to play this stuff on a handheld, uh, I think you can get the Zero collection for still like $20 on Amazon in the US. Um, but it's, I'm more to the point where, I mean, this is, this, I'm, I'm going to take you on a tangent for a second. I apologize, but. Absolutely, uh, go for it. Why the hell aren't these games on my 3DS? Um. Have you that guys had discussions about this? I think everyone's had discussions about this, Kevin. It's because think about it. Well, actually, okay. So you got the uh, the 3DS games that came out way, way back in 2011, 2012, those GBA games. I think it was like m summer 2011 and then like uh, okay, late 2011. That was the uh, – those GBA games came out mm -hmm. in the late 2011. They have never been updated to include save states. They have pretty much just been GBA games emulated to run on the 3DS, as is with their save games. Sure. You would think that in, what, four years or three-plus years by this point, maybe they figure out how to add save states and how to package it properly as an eShop game. My guess is that they just want to give the Wii U uh, one more thing one more bullet point to add to it. Though I don't know anyone who's buying a Wii U for the Game Boy Advance games. Well, who's even buying it for, to play Wii games? Like, I, 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 I love <laughs> that they put, they put Wii uh, games up on the eShop as well. Like getting, you know, Metroid Prime Trilogy for 10 bucks is incredible. Um, that's a no-brainer. But um, first off, I'm scared. They released three awesome Wii games. That's it. We haven't heard anything. We're... we're where, where are the other games? This is what Nintendo always does. Where like, oh my god, they're finally bringing these games, and they all disappear. I'm worried about Nintendo 64 stuff too. They got a couple games coming out, and I bet we're not going to see any other Nintendo 64 games for a long time. Maybe at E3 they'll be like, oh yeah, here's you know three more uh, Nintendo 64 games that you can buy. Um, but like with all this stuff. I, I look at the Nintendo 3DS hardware. It's capable of doing this stuff. Um, they, even if it is just as simple as, like you said, just emulate basically like doing Nintendo DS or uh, Nintendo, I guess they're doing DS emulation the way that it could accept GBA games into a Nintendo DS on the 3DS. And that's why it doesn't have any of those save states because it's basically putting it into DS mode when it launches those Game Boy Advance games, mm -hmm. which... Is fine. Like I don't need save states. I don't mind if it, if it the game has built-in saves as long as it saves. I'm cool with that. But um, there's so many awesome Game Boy Advance games that I wish I could be playing on uh, my 3ds. And if they had them for six bucks, I'd be all over it. But uh, again, I I don't want to play a portable game on my Wii U on my 60-inch TV. I don't want to be playing a game that was built for a four-inch screen. Although that being said. The Metro, Metroid on Game Boy Advance looks awesome on, on a TV. I saw that. You know, the Castlevania games still look really good, uh, blown up on a TV, but they're portable games. They should be on your G damn portable system. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Like, again, it's like one of those things where Nintendo does all this stuff that I love, 
and I buy their stuff. Like I, I have stuffed animals. I have this little miniature link that I bought from Japan for like $25. Like I'll buy their stuff and I buy their games. I bought Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, but then they do stuff like this that just literally makes no sense. And I've heard stories from people that know Nintendo uh, in terms of like how they run things in Japan. And I've heard like, that's just, it's just how they do it. Like they get, it's like, it's like a kid that sees one thing and they get really excited about it. Then something else comes up and they completely forget about the other thing. It's like, if you brought one puppy in and then you brought in a whole different puppy, 10 minutes later, they want to go see the new puppy and they're done with the old one because that's just kind of how uh, things work. But you know, it's hey man, we're getting, we're getting the games. If you have a Wii, you can play them. That's awesome. Sorry. That was my, I didn't mean to get up on my podium. No, my no, no. Meeting, it's, it's go it's on as many me, podiums man. as you want. As, as long as this complaint, these complaints of yours end with why in the world is Pokemon red and blue, not on the eShop. I'm all for it because right. why in the world is Pokemon red and blue, not on the eShop. You having X and Y does not justify how many people would love playing Pokemon Red and Blue on the 3DS, especially 3D classics. Like, I get it. I get that the totally. Big Boy Link compatibility is the main issue. However, it's Pokemon Red and Blue. Yeah. Well, check this out. I'm going to blow your mind. Um, Pokemon Red and Blue remastered. And you can sync, you can trade wirelessly because they're just redoing that game. Not really better graphics. They're just making it mm -hmm. so it can run natively on a 3DS instead of having to run in emulation. You sell it for, hell, you sell it for $7 instead of $6. And a ton of people are going to play it because that, I still have memories of playing that in seventh grade. Like we played after school. I played, it was the one game that unified, you know, the nerds and the jocks and everyone in between. We played that game. Like I was, I was on the football team me and a bunch of football players, we were playing Pokemon and we were playing it with like the kids that we would never hang out with. But after school, it's like, dude, you get, I got this. All right. I got this Bulbasaur. He's not evolved, but he, I got, I've been, I've been stunning his growth. Like I got him like level 25. All right. I want, I want, I want that Raichu. So um, let's see. I'm going to give you, I'm also going to give you a dollar 50 plus this Bulbasaur, which you can evolve if you want. I need that right you, man, uh, because I'm going into battle with Brock. And, you know, he's, I mean, I know he's got rock Pokemon, but I just want that right you to freak him out. I just want to freak <laughs> him out. Just think him, make him think like I don't know what I'm doing. Then I'm going to be dropping some water and it's just going to be, it's going to be over. I don't need that. I, I don't need that Bulbasaur. So that's what I'm saying. Like, all they got to do, like little things like this, farm it out to other people. Like, they did a great job, you know, farming out, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles and Dark Country 3D to that company that I can't remember right now, but um, they obviously Monster have games. Monster Games. So it's clearly you know people that they trust to do weird stuff like this, uh, or you know there's this Pokemon company too, uh, mm -hmm. Game Freak that could do it as well. Maybe they want to make some more money, but who knows? I, I'm sure they have their reasons. Um, you know, Nintendo isn't doing super great financially, but they're not doing terribly either, and I mean, the, I guess they're happy with where they're at and we're going to get a new console in like a year and a half anyways. Maybe eventually we'll be able to emulate. Like I, I, I'm playing PlayStation 1 games on my Vita. Yeah. PlayStation 1 games. And they run great. They run fantastic. It, they, they run even better because you can have faster loading times. <laughs> and I, I yeah. still can't play... I can't play a Game Boy Advance game on... I don't know. At least get me Neo Geo like pocket color games or something like that. But I don't mind. I got two Neo Geo pocket colors over there. I got about 20 games and I just bought a Neo Geo pocket color game off of Amazon.com yesterday. What's up? Dynamite Slugger. $10. Beautiful. So, and then one last thing before we move on to our last story that I want to point out since we're talking about Pokemon. I just want to remind everyone that the original Pokemon Red and Green came out in February of 1996. And if you can do the math, that means that, yeah, next year, 2016, will be the Pokemon franchise's 20th anniversary. Wow. There better be something. There better be something related to the first generation of Pokemon games. I swear to God, Satoshi Tajiri. How about it's another time. Pokemon game where we can charge you $40 for each version, and then we'll have three versions this time? And I want to buy both. I, I can't wait. I just want more Pokemon. 
Do you want? Do you want I mean, Yokai Watch? You you keeping an eye on Yokai yeah, Watch? I'm keeping an eye on Yokai Watch. I'm actually keeping a big eye on Yokai Watch. I was extremely excited when they finally like officially 100 yeah. confirmed it. Have you played that game before? No, I've. It's all. It's all over the place in Japan, and it's like yeah. it's in, like blown up on uh, like in the stores. They always have like these kiosks where the like games are blown up and stuff like that, and uh, the anime is doing you know huge out there, and it it looks it looks cool because it's like it's like ghost Pokemon, which, all right. I, I just, I I've tried, I own Pokemon X. I tried to getting into Pokemon Sapphire, Omega Sapphire, I think it is. And Alpha Sapphire. Al- Alpha Sapphire. Right. Or Mega oh. Ruby. Yeah, it's Alpha. Yeah. Uh, but I, I couldn't, I don't know. Like it's, I don't know what it is about those games, but it's not grabbing me like red and blue did. Maybe Yokai watch being a completely different experience. Uh, just because I feel like those games are a little bit too similar, maybe being a completely different experience, but with the same hook, uh, will be the thing that gets me playing, uh, another like collectible trading game. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you on Pokemon X and Y and Pokemon Omega Ru- or Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire being not the games Pokemon used to be, because you know what? Pokemon is way easier now than it used to be. Pokemon yeah. is shows way less resistance than the first three or four generations did. And do you and feel like the mystery's gone too? Like, I feel like there's just, like, there's, I just know what I'm going to get going into it, where the first red and blue, I was like, everything, it was like a brand new world to explore. Now it's the same yep. kind of system over and over again. You go see the professor, you go to, you know, the, the champions in each one of the towns, and then you go and you're a Pokemon master. You will never see missing no in another Pokemon game again. Every glitch Pokemon you see will now be just some screwed up blank sprite that's completely unimaginative. <laughs> you will never see missing no ever again, which was completely a glitch. It was yeah. it shouldn't have happened. They didn't want it to happen, but there was so much heart put into that game that even their glitches had an immeasurable amount of personality to them. Hell yeah. And we will never see that again, which is which is really depressing. We're never gonna have slightly broken but also a simultaneously amazing Pokemon games ever again. And and that's kind of sad that they're all just gonna be perfect and shiny. Stop bumming me out, man. God. <laughs> Let's let's uh, let's go through our final story. They detailed the new Mario Kart 8 DLC uh, this week. They got Nature Road, which is a forest themed one. They got uh, Ling Ling Metro, which is a subway themed one. Uh, and then that's the Japanese name. They got uh, Animal Crossing, and then they got Big Blue from F Zero. And as Joshua Hillier was telling us on Twitter. The music for the big blue track in F Zero is incredible. It's like it's it's the classic quintessential uh, F Zero music, but Mario Kartified, so it's like faster and fun and Mario Karty, and it's just a blast. <laughs> and then you also got you also got Ribbon Road, Cheese Land, Baby Park, and Neo Bowser City from uh, Super Circuit Double Dash and Mario Kart Seven. And then you got Villager. You got Villager of both genders. You got Isabelle, and then you got. Uh, Dry Bones Bowser, or Dry Bowser, who, who looks really cool in this one. It's he's, his back has like this cool lava effect. I don't know. I paid for this DLC a while ago as part yeah. of that like eight or twelve buck thing. I, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, the DLC is better than the rest of the game, in my opinion. Yeah. No, like this is Nintendo again. They do some things like super right. The DLC for this game has been above and beyond uh, anything that anyone would have expected. Um, I mean, they're making whole new tracks, uh, not just to race on, but also for the soundtrack, um, which has me hoping because I have, uh, you know, the Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart 8 soundtrack. They got to make sure that they release these tracks so people can buy them uh, some way because they've, I guess, released, you know, eight or 16 total tracks in the end. Uh, Put that music out because the stuff that they're doing with big band, whether it be, uh, like Super Mario 3D World, one of the best soundtracks I've ever done. Um, and just being able to have this music is is really important to me. But man, like the, the amount of content in that game is just incredible. I really, it is by far the best, obviously, it's by, by far the best, you know, family of tracks in a Mario Kart game. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it is like the one game, if any game has ever deserved like a game of the year edition or an ultimate edition, it's this game getting all those tracks on one disc 
uh, so people can experience that stuff, uh, I think is vital. I think it would be great if they came out with, like this Christmas, Mario Kart 8 packed in with a console and get all those tracks on the disc and call like Mario Kart 8, you know, ultimate, you know, yeah, whatever. Ultimate Mario Kart 8. Sure. There you go. There Just you like go. Ultimate Mortal Kombat, same same letters. Just use that Ultimate MK. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. Like when Mario Kart Eight first came out, I was not that hyped on the game. In fact, I think I refused to buy it for a while until like Black hmm. Friday that year, just because like it's I, I was bothered with the way Mario Kart Seven went and how unimaginative that game was in a lot sure. of ways. And from the outside until you realize that they actually do a lot of uh, mechanic changes and that the courses are probably the best design they've ever been in the series, it's easy to look at Mario Kart 8 from the outside and get super cynical. Yeah. However, upon playing Mario Kart 8 and upon seeing these all these tracks put together, it might be one of the best in the series. Like, There's a case you can make for uh, Mario Kart DS. There's a case you can probably make for... 64 and double bash if you want to go down that road but if you're gonna do a fourth to put in that race it's mario kart 8 i think i i think is not even a dispute it's the best it's the best game in the series and the amount of love and care that they're putting into that game is is really great to see it is if you have not gotten the dlc for that game and that disc is on your shelf you're absolutely nuts because you're getting literally a whole second game wor games worth <laughs> of content on one of the best looking games on the console and really in general, like that game just looks outstanding mm -hmm. and it's still, it's still a ton of fun. It's easy to pick up and play for anyone. And, uh, they're also getting that 200 CC, uh, you know, speed in there too, which is going to allow people who are just like play it all the time. You get to now go 200 CCs, which is even more impressive that they're able to maintain that frame rate at 200 CCs now. Excellent. And there you have it. That is a brand new installment of Nintendo News Report once again for Thursday, April 16th, 2015. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me. It was a great episode. Yeah, this this was fun. I apologize for getting on the pedestal a little bit, but uh, you know, when I get to speak to the Nintendo audience directly, I think it's always good to bring up these subjects so everyone is aware and that we can all make sure if we ever see uh, you know, our favorite folks that work at Nintendo at a PAX East or uh, PAX West or whatever, you know, voice your opinion. Don't for no, don't be afraid to uh, let them know how you think they could be doing a better job because I know those guys are all awesome. Everyone, everyone that I've ever met from Nintendo is just like the nicest people in the world. And Kevin, where can we hear you go on a pedestal in other places as well? So uh, I do this podcast called Back in My Play, which is a retro game podcast. It's uh, a podcast for nostalgic gamers who want to look back it basically i'm going to give you the premise real quick it is it's me and it's either one or two other people and we talk about a game first about how we remember it when it was originally released and then we also revisit part of the rules that you got to play through this game again so you can get a fresh take see how it holds up and really what stands out to you now and it is uh it's really a podcast where i get to go play games that i either love for my past or that i've recently discovered and you know, usually have guests like uh, like Greg Seward and uh, CJ from Player One Podcast. Uh, Phil's been on. Uh, Peter Brown from from GameSpot. Uh, Patrick Kleppa came on to do uh, Yoshi's Island because that's, of course, if you ever hear him talk about Yoshi's Island, I love that game. <laughs> um, and I've done a, a lot of great interviews. I've been lucky to have uh, people like Blake J. Harris on the on the show to talk about his book Console Wars. David Kushner talked about uh, Masters of Doom. Uh, Jules uh, Watchem uh, from Renegade Kid has been on. Uh, Mike Micah, who's now doing stuff, uh, he just recently did IDAR, but he's worked on a he like started working on Game Boy Color games. Like the history that he has with video games is super cool. So um, it's not only those like game specific episodes, but also uh, interviews. And uh, we just came back with our latest episode. Uh, Greg Stewart and I talked about EverDrives, which are these devices that allow you to uh, play you know, games that are on an SD card on the original hardware. Um, but it's really not in terms of like putting a bunch of games on an SD card. It's getting able, you know, access to these prototypes in these like trans, like, tr like translated Super Nintendo games of Japanese games that never made it over here to the States. Getting a chance to play that stuff on original hardware instead of like an emulator. Um, 
and it's a gray area. I'll be real. Like there's going to be spots where, you know, is if you can't buy this game anyway, um, or even like I justify, like I'll own the Japanese version of the game. I'm playing it in English on an SD card, but I own the game. Like come at me. Uh, but yeah, it's, <laughs> Check it out. It's it's back in my play dot com. Uh, Joshua Hillier, as you mentioned, has also been on a bunch of those episodes. So, you know, it's just people who like to have a great time. It's a super positive podcast. Like, I hate snark. I hate you know. I think the game industry is getting like really gross with like how people think it's just like I'm going to be funny. I'm going to say I hate this game, and you know, everyone that likes is idiots. No, like it, it, this is a celebration of games with you know the ability to have uh, some criticism. But like, uh, I'm a, can I bring up Johnny Metz's stuff real quick? Because yeah, go for oh, it. Jeez, he. Okay, so so Johnny, I we had him on the show. He was able to come at us with any game. I'm like, dude, like hey, we got this list of games. Like this is like what we're looking to do in the next five or six episodes. Any of this appealing? He goes, no. You know what I want to play? Mylon Secret Castle. <laughs> he did and do that, didn't he? That that was oh, the. I think that is the only episode where I was just like, I'm going to be real with you guys. This game's terrible. This game's bad. And uh, Johnny has really good memories of that game. But um, I mean, as a, a critic, you cannot say that that is uh, a game that is worth picking up today. Uh, you, you would be much better off, um, you know, potentially putting your hand in a bowl of syringes. Uh, than, than you know, <laughs> putting your hands on an NES controller to play Mile and Secret Castle. It's that bad. But that's, I mean, it's still a fun episode. Uh, but yeah, it's it's great. And also, I recommend checking out the, uh, we got CJ, Chris Johnson from Player One to watch The Wizard. Uh, he never watched The Wizard. He watched it. And if you know that movie, it's crazy. It's awesome. Totally filled with Nintendo stuff. Uh, and then we also brought him on to talk about it. So yeah, check it. I mean, it's back in my play.com. It's on iTunes. You can check it out on there. But um, I think if you give it a listen uh, and you like old games or you want to discover some old games, uh, we've gotten mostly positive feedback from it. Usually it's all you know, some pretty hardcore listeners that have been really awesome the last couple of months. Beautiful. And uh, you can find Kevin at Kevin Larrabee. That's at K E V I N L A R R A B E E. That's right, right? So. You got it. Okay, and then at back in my play. That's that's the other Twitter you, you do, right? Yeah, and if you if you want to talk about games, like you know, hit me up on on Twitter. Hit up you know at back in my play. I respond to everything that gets replied on there. So, um, or if you have feedback from the show or from this, just you know, let me know. Don't be afraid to uh, shoot me a tweet. And there you go. And then you can also watch this show, guys, every Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Pacific. I'm on Twitter at c u l a f i a. That's a show. See you next week, everybody. Bye-bye.